All right, today we are in Unit 2, Section 2. This is Objective 2.2, A3. We're still dealing with exponent rules, and today we're looking at the zero exponent rule and the negative exponent rule. Our objective is the student will be able to simplify expressions using the product rule, zero rule, quotient rule, and the negative exponent rule. So like I said, we're covering the zero rule and the quotient, or sorry, and the negative exponent rule. We're starting off with the zero exponent rule, which states that if a does not equal zero, then a to the zero power equals one. What they're saying is a represents any number. It is a variable, so it can be any number as long as it's not zero. If you raise any number to the power of zero, it's going to be one. I'm going to kind of explain why here um, using the number two as an example. So if we look at this box right here, I have two to the power of four. That's going to be 16. Two to the power of three is going to be eight. Two to the second power is going to be four. And two to the first is going to be two. Now, a lot of the time, students see two to the power of zero or any number to the power of zero, and they think that the answer must be zero. But actually, in this case, the answer is one. And we'll kind of look at the reason why. Um, if you take a look, for example, I'm going to use two to the power of one. If I divide two to the power of one by itself, I know that these will cancel out and this will equal one, kind of a no-brainer. Well, if I look at two to the first over two to the first again, exact same problem, um, but it, instead this time I use the quotient rule that says when I divide like bases, I subtract the exponents. This gives me two to the one minus one power which becomes 2 to the 0 power. Now we started off with the exact same problem, 2 to the first power and 2 to the first power, and I ended up with, in a way, two different answers. I ended up with 1 and 2 to the 0 power. So if these two things are the same, and these two things came out of it, that must mean that 2 to the 0 power is equal to 1. And I can use this kind of reasoning for any number, really. So anything raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. We're going to go through some examples on this. Starting off with example 1, 7 to the power of 0 is going to be 1. Example 2, negative 7 to the power of 0. We have to look at what this uh, exponent is affecting. It's not affecting the negative. It's only affecting the 7. So this is going to be negative 1. If we had, let's say, negative 7 in parentheses raised to the 0 power, well then the exponent of 0 is affecting the negative, therefore our answer would be positive 1. In example 3, I have 2x plus 5 raised to the power of 0, and we just talked about the fact that parentheses means the exponent is affecting everything. So same thing here. We have in parentheses 2x plus 5 equals 0. Now this means that the entire piece is being affected so this is going to be equal to 1. 2x to the power of 0. Again, the 0 is only affecting the x. It is not affecting the 2. Therefore, this is going to be 2 times 1, which is 2. In example 5, I have 3 to the power of 0 minus t to the power of, minus 3t to the power of 0. Well, 3 to the 0 power is 1, and I'm subtracting 3 times t to the power of 0, so I'm subtracting 3 times 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And lastly, I have 4 times x to the 0 power minus 5. The exponent is only affecting the x, it is not affecting the 4, so I have 4 
times 1 minus 5 is 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. Okay, that is the zero exponent rule. And we're going to move on in a second to the negative exponent rule. Get this erased. Okay. For the negative exponent rule, it states that if a is a real number other than zero, again, a is a, is a variable, so it counts for any number. If a is a real number other than zero and n is a positive integer, then a to the negative n power equals 1 over a to the n. That's a lot of fancy math talk just to say to make n a negative exponent positive, you need to put it in the denominator of a fraction. So what's happening here is we can no longer have negative exponents in our answers because we now know how to get rid of them. So for example one, I have five to the negative two power and I need to make the exponent positive. To do that, I need to create my own fraction by writing a one and drawing a line underneath. And I'm gonna take whatever the negative two is affecting. Well, in this example, it's only affecting the five. So I'm gonna take this and put it in the bottom of the fraction. And when I put it in the bottom of the fraction, the negative two now becomes positive two. And 5 squared is 25, so I'm going to have 1 over 25. In example 2, I have negative 4 to the power of negative 4. So again, I need this negative 4 to be positive. So what I do is I create my own fraction by writing a 1 and drawing a line underneath. Then I'm going to take this because this negative four exponent is affecting all of the negative four in the parentheses, and I'm gonna move it underneath the numerator. So I have negative four raised to the power of positive four. This is gonna be equal to one over 256. Okay, example three. I have 2 times x to the negative 3 power. Now again, it's all about what the negative exponent is affecting. In this case, the negative exponent only affects the x. So I'm going to create my fraction. I have a 1. I'm drawing my line, and I'm putting this underneath. It becomes x to the positive 3 power. But what about this 2? I can't put it underneath the fraction because I'm not dividing by 2. I'm multiplying. So because of this, I'm going to put it in the numerator. I'm going to say this is 1 times 2. So this is going to be 2 over x to the power of 3. In example 4, the negative 1 affects everything, both the 3 and the x. So. I'm going to create my fraction by drawing a 1 and putting a line underneath, taking what's affected and putting it underneath the fraction in the denominator. So I have 3x raised to the positive 1 power, which is just going to be 1 over 3x. In example 5, I have m to the power of 5 divided by m to the power of 15. Well, I mean, as it stands right now, I don't have a negative exponent. But what I do have is m divided by m. So when I'm dividing like bases, I need to subtract my exponents. That's the quotient rule, which we talked about previously. So this is going to become m to the 5 minus 15 power, which is going to be m to the negative 10th. And because that's negative, I'm going to create a fraction and draw a line underneath. I'm going to take this and put it in the denominator. So it's m to the positive 10 power.
Example six is kind of the same deal. I have threes, which are my like bases, and I need to subtract those exponents. So I have three raised to the three minus six power, which is three to the negative third. I'm gonna create my fraction by putting a one and a line. I'm gonna take this, put it underneath, and I have three to the positive three power. This is going to equal 1 over positive 27. In example 7, I have 2 to the negative first plus 3 to the negative 2. So these are not like bases. I can't just add 2 and 3 and call it 5, and negative 1 and negative 2 and call it negative 3. That's not how this works. So what I need to do is treat them as their own piece. I have the 2 to the negative 1 and the 3 to the negative 2. I'm going to mess with them separately. So to get 2 to the negative first to be a positive exponent, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my fraction and put this underneath 2 to the positive first. And then I'm going to add my other fraction with the denominator of 3 to the positive 2 power. So this becomes 1 half plus 1 to the ninth power, or pardon me, 1 divided by 9. Well, to add 1 half and 1 ninth, I need to have a common denominator, which in this case, 2 times 9 is 18. So I'm going to get my common denominator. And I have 9 over 18 plus 2 over 18, and that's going to equal 11 over 18. In example 8, I have 1 over p to the negative fifth power. Now the thing here is, is that this is already negative, or it's, it's already in the bottom of the fraction but it's negative, so what am I supposed to do with that? Well, in this case, when you can't put it below anything because it's already in the bottom, what you need to do is take p to the negative fifth and move it up. So this is gonna become p to the positive five power over one, which is just p to the positive five power. All right, that is all that we have for the negative exponent rule and the zero exponent rule. So we are done. Thank you.